the five highest yielding dividend aristocrats coming up. Hey there, my name is Steven Spicer and it's my goal to help you invest smarter. I wanna share with you the best ideas to the best options, the best opportunities for you to invest. But really my goal is to help you to be able to invest smarter on your own, to do the requisite research and analysis to be confident in your portfolio, no matter what chaos happens in the market. I think that's the best service I can do for you. And if that's the type of portfolio that you'd like to have, then don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of these insights. Now, one of the hardest parts of finding good stocks is knowing where to start. So this is just one of several videos that I've been putting together and plan to continue to create for you to help you get started, to potentially identify and pique your interest in individual stocks. In an earlier video, we compared the 11 S&P 500 stocks that have increased their dividend payout for at least 55 years. In this video, I wanna start exploring with you some of the so-called dividend aristocrats those S&P 500 companies with at least 25 years of consecutive annual dividend growth. But obviously trying to cram all 57 of them into a single video would be super practical. So I decided to start with the five with the highest dividend yield. And there are some exciting yields on this list. The highest on that list of 11 that we covered was Coke at around 3.4%, but all the rest were under 3%. Well, within the aristocrats, there are actually five that currently have yields over 4%, putting them in the top 25% of all dividend payers. But of course, with a high yield comes the need for additional caution and scrutiny, making those 11 metrics that I look at before ever diving into a dividend payer all the more important. Now, if you'd like to get that list of 11 in beautiful PDF format, well, you can get your copy at spicercapital.com forward slash dividend checklist. Now, just like last time, I pulled out a few of those metrics and plugged them into a spreadsheet for you. Everybody seemed to appreciate that spreadsheet access, so I did it again. I'll link out to the spreadsheet that you'll be seeing throughout this video, but I actually decided to create it as another tab on the same spreadsheet as last time. So if you already have it and saved it, well, this information will all be in there now. Now, if you'd like for me to continue adding little bits of my preliminary research like this that, that I'm able to explain via video for you, then let me know by hitting that like button. I'd love to continue to build these resources for you if you can, if you can let me know that it's worth the effort. Thank you. Now, before we move on, I do have to say that I am also a practicing registered investment advisor. So it's important to me that you understand that these are not recommendations in any way. I don't know your personal circumstances. I'm just going to point out some facts about these companies and tell you why they're interesting to me right now. And if they seem interesting to you, you should definitely conduct your own research and analysis to decide if they fit in your portfolio and make sense for you specifically. My goal with this video is to help you identify different aspects of the research process and expose you to some different ideas so that if something piques your interest, it can be a good starting place for your own deep dive. So let's dive into those top five, shall we? I'll give you the full list in order here. Then I'll give you my thoughts on the group as a whole. Then I'll take you through some details and observations from my cursory analysis. Feel free to use the detailed timestamps in the description or to just hang out with me as we work through each of these. So the five dividend aristocrats currently sporting a dividend yield higher than 4% are ExxonMobil, Cardinal Health, People's United Financial, AbV and AT&T. With this portfolio of five, there are, in my opinion, some clear winners and some clear losers. More specifically, if gun to my head, you forced me to go short or long each of these stocks, well, based on my initial observations, again, no deep dive yet, there are three that I'd go long. One of those I'm, I'm pretty neutral on, but if it wasn't an option, I'd go long. And two that I'd short. So what that means to me now is that my next step here would be to dive into those two stocks that I'm excited about, the ones that seem to be the best candidates for potentially being undervalued today. So that's what I'll do next with this particular vein of my research. Then I'll dive into those potential shorts. You see, with all of these aristocrats, there's a premium baked in, that extra amount that people are willing to pay for the sole fact 
that they have this impressive track record of increasing their dividend. And it makes sense, but that means that if a company gets into trouble and for whatever reason, perhaps for survival even, has to throw that record out the window and cut those dividends, that aristocrat premium, it evaporates overnight. So for me, these can be prime candidates for the short side of my portfolio. So let's get into it and I'll reveal which is which and why as we go through. ExxonMobil has a market capitalization of almost $350 billion and a PE ratio of 17. Its dividend yield is currently 4% and it has 36 years of consecutive annual increases. From these cursory metrics that I look at to determine if a deep dive will be worth my while, Exxon looks pretty solid. Its debt is only about 20% of its equity, which is great. Its annual operating cash flow is almost as much as its total debt, which is stellar. The company's EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, is about 28 times what it pays in interest each year, which again, is more than comfortable. And their payout coverage ratio, although not the best, it's not at a concerning level. Clearly, Exxon looks pretty solid. Its dividend doesn't seem to be at risk at all. And so you know, number six on the list, the sixth highest dividend yield for an aristocrat is Chevron at 3.8%. Chevron has a pretty similar profile. Everything looks solid, not quite as fantastic as, as Exxon, but solid. I think their biggest problem is that they're both in the oil and gas sector. I've expressed caution about ONG, oil and gas companies before, specifically, as some of you I'm sure bitterly remember when I covered High Crush. Uh, the problem is that these companies are so impacted, more so than other industries, by many different unpredictable macro forces. Most directly, the price of oil, which is affected by a whole bunch of stuff. That can cause volatility for all of the companies in the supply chain of the oil industry. That unpredictability creates sometimes extreme volatility, which for most is undesirable. There are also political concerns for the oil and gas industry in the United States at least. And at the heart of all of that, many people have moral and ethical concerns about investing in such corporations. All of that can lead to a depressed valuation. And honestly, much of that probably won't go away and may even intensify in the future. So after I conduct my deeper dive, I'm not anticipating discovering any sort of deep value story here where I, I anticipate the price to shoot up to a much higher fair value. But if you're looking for a solid high dividend payer, of all these companies on, on this list at least, I, I think you found it. At least it's a good place for you to kick off your research. For better or for worse, I can't imagine the company going anywhere anytime soon as oil concerns may cause other ONG companies to struggle to keep up with their debt payments. Exxon's balance sheet looks great. I think they'll be fine and could potentially benefit from other smaller competitors having problems like that. So I'm eager, especially for my clients who are in or preparing for retirement, to dive deeper into Exxon to see if it actually might be the dependable high dividend payer that I think it is over the next couple decades. Needless to say, this is one of those two that if forced to make a decision right now, that I'd go long. Next, we have Cardinal Health. Now, if you watch Michael J's channel, you'll know that he's a big fan of this company. And I admit, I haven't done my deep dive as I'm sure he has, but on the surface, Cardinal looks pretty sick. It's a $13 billion company that is currently loss making. It doesn't generate a profit, it loses money. Always a concern when you're talking about the future of a dividend. Its current yield is 4.1% and it boasts a 33 year consecutive annual increase streak. But its debt is almost one and a half times its net worth, which should be concerning if you're a shareholder. But worse than that, it's not making any money. The company is losing money. So when you talk about its ability to cover its interest payments with EBIT, well, they currently can't, didn't, didn't have any. And of course, you can't really calculate a payout ratio when there is no profit to pay any part of the dividend. Now, I'll have to dig deeper, but these are some pretty big red flags. And sometimes, as hard as it may be for management to do, sometimes it's the right call to forego the dividend payment, or, or at least to forego an increase, to say goodbye to that aristocrat status, and to focus on rebuilding a stable, profitable company. So without any additional information, there you have one of my shorts. 
Next up, the smallest of a bunch, People's United Financial. It's a roughly $7 billion bank with a PE ratio of only 13. Now, banks are difficult to analyze. The, the details of their books are often unclear. So proceed with caution here. But based on what I've found on the surface level, I'm intrigued. Now, there have been a lot of insider sales recently, so I'm not totally sold. There may be something going on here that I haven't seen yet. And if anyone has any insights, by all means, share in the comments. But on the surface, I see a pretty solid company paying a 4.2% dividend yield. Now, they're one of the newbies on this list, just hitting aristocrat status with their last increase. And of these five, Peoples has the best looking payout coverage ratio at just under two. So, gun to my head, gotta make a decision right now based on these limited facts, I'm long. Next, with a 5.2%, big leap there, dividend yield, we have the $121 billion AbV with a PE ratio of 22. They have 46 consecutive annual dividend increases under their belt, the, the most on this list by a decade. Presumably, over those four and a half decades, they made it through some tough times, but their balance sheet doesn't look too great today. They have negative shareholder equity, which is even more concerning than having your debt higher than your net worth. That being said, their EBIT is enough to cover their interest payments at least 10 times over, but their final profits that they're realizing aren't even enough to fully cover the dividend that they're currently paying comes in at about 90%. So again, if forced to make a decision today, I'd be short this one. I look forward to diving in and seeing if that holds true. Finally, we have the ever so popular AT&T. The market just doesn't seem to like the massive amount of debt that this $235 billion telecom giant has built up over recent years. As such, it bears the lowest PE of the bunch at 12. Its dividend is an enticing 6.4% and the company boasts 35 years of consecutive annual increases. So how bad is their debt? Well, it's almost as big as their equity, which is concerning. The company's EBIT is only about four times its interest payments, which is manageable, but it, it kind of needs things to go its way in the near future if it expects to be able to cover that interest and continue with its dividend increases. This is one that I'm pretty neutral on at this point. I could see it going either way. If I had to choose, I'd go long, but that would definitely be with the least conviction of the three longs. I hope this format gave you some things to think about, some metrics to work into your analyses or some companies to study. If you appreciate this format and would like me to keep putting this information into a shareable spreadsheet for you and, and video, then let me know with a like. And if you want that spreadsheet or the dividend checklist, just go grab it from the description. I've got a lot more investing resources on the way, so I hope you'll subscribe and hit that notification bell. I wish you all the best. Take care.